you. So we're just going to have a conversation, the three of us today, about stuff that I want to talk about. You may or may not be interested. I don't care. I've got the <laughs> uh, So let's, let's start with talking about Luke Cage, uh, which did an amazing job first season. And now we're coming back to season two. And what I've noticed is that it seems that you have been very intentional with respect to who the directors are. We were talking about the fact that you have not directed an episode yet. But there have been lots of female Mm -hmm. directors. Can you talk about why that choice was made and why it's important? Well, I mean, the thing was, was that um, in looking back at the first season, it was the one thing that we didn't have. Um, And that was honestly, um, Millicent Shelton and a few other directors that we had reached out to, the schedule didn't work. So it wasn't like that wasn't in the plans. But then in terms of starting the second season, it was one of the things that we just expressly thought was important to do. And the other thing was, was that the show has always been about breaking down stereotypes. And the thing is, is that there are always so many different limitations that have been wrongfully placed on female directors saying, oh, a female director can't direct action. A female director can't do this. And the whole thing is camera, the camera doesn't, is a control by gender. It's, you know, it's really just about taste of where you place the camera and having a vision. And to me, that's not gender specific at all. It's really about who has a passion for it. And the directors that we worked with were incredibly passionate about the show and it was the opportunity to right a wrong, you know, and so that was really the thing. It wasn't like it was a mission or, or anything else. It was more about, you know, trying to get people that were going to be representative of the world and that's kind of what happened. That's fantastic. So, so tell us a little bit about season two. I know you can't do spoilers, but at the end of season one, we know that Luke is getting into a car, right, to go back and, and finish doing his time. Um, and Misty is just out there in the world doing her thing, and um, all of all of the villains from season one have been vanquished. So where do we pick up? How much time difference is between the end of season one and the beginning of season two? And tell us what we can expect. Okay, so the only thing that's happened in between season one and season two, of course, is the defenders, and so. A lot of things happen in Defenders. At the very end of season one, there was a file that came from Shades that cleared Luke of, you know, because he was wrongfully convicted. So, of course, that services in Defenders for him to get out of Defenders. So that's been cleared up. At the second, at, you know, Defenders leaves, you know, Mariah Dillard comes out alone. So she's very much empowered at the beginning of season two. Misty Knight, uh, I, I guess I'm going to spoil Defenders if, if people haven't seen it. Um, Misty famously loses her arm. Um, and so when we're beginning season two of Luke Cage, we're basically, I want to say maybe six months after Defenders. And so Luke is fully established back in Harlem and is a celebrity because he's, the, he's, he's one of the only superheroes that, you know, doesn't wear masks, doesn't, have, doesn't really, be, other than his hoodie, have a uniform. So it's really, he's accessible. You know, if you come to Pop's Barbershop, you can see Luke Cage. And so now he's dealing with the fact of what is that in the age of Twitter, in the age of social media? What does it mean to be out there like that where you can actually run into one of your heroes and also give him stuff if he's not doing what you want him to do? At the same time, also, we begin with um, Misty dealing with not having an arm. Um, And at the same time, we're also resetting Mariah um, and Shades, um, who, you know, are, they're, Already complicated relationship is even more complicated. Um, Child, now let me just say, <laughs> how does that get more? Complicated? I, 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 I'm not going to spoil it, but I have seen a couple of the screeners, and complicated is polite. <laughs> it's, it's, it's you know definitely some hot complications. So um, you know, and then at the same time, also um, you know the overall theme, I would say, um, it comes from a Mike Tyson quote. Mike Tyson once said, everybody's got a plan until they get hit in the face. And to me, that was one of the underlying themes of what season two is about, is everyone thinks they've got a plan until they get hit. And then when you, in Luke's case, you know, you've got a new character, John MacGyver, who, if you know some of the history of comic books, has an interesting tie to Luke Cage, or, or as a or really an interesting antagonist. Of course, we all, as usual for the show, we always tweak and kind of flip you know, comic book canon in order to make it fit the show. So in the way that he's introduced, he kind of comes out of nowhere and um, 
is Kim coming to Harlem and the repercussions of that, what it means for both Luke and what it also means for Mariah that has a ripple effect throughout the entire season. And it's just really a question of Luke's going to lose a lot, but then Luke's also going to gain himself. And that was one of the things um, that was really important was really if season one was about establishing Luke as a hero, season two is really who is Luke Cage as a man.